For the most part, this was an ugly series played by the San Francisco Giants, but you know what? They come out winning two out of three against the Padres, and at the end of the day, that is all that matters. You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik and on the show we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015. I've been hosting Locked On Giants uh, for over five years now, and I'm a lifelong Giants fan. Thank you for making Locked On Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. So check us out there. If you have not already, please hit that subscribe button, thumbs up, five stars, whatever you can do. Thank you so much in advance, and thanks to everyone who's done so already. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. And coming up on today's show, we are gonna get into the Giants winning two out of three. I'm two for two on predictions with Javier Reyes. He, to his credit, you know, Javier Reyes of Locked On Padres. Uh, To open the season, he predicted a four-game sweep by the Padres, and I predicted a split. They split. And then he humbly said Giants would win two out of three in this series, and I said the same thing, and that's exactly what transpired. Giants win two out of three. They didn't do so in the prettiest of ways. They um, Their two wins were not pretty. And it took grinding. And then their one loss was extremely not pretty. Um, And and they made a lot of of mistakes in this series. And the offense was sluggish this entire series. And so we will kind of just um, get into what it took to win two out of three and also discuss any level of concern with what we've seen from the offense, which now... uh, with more games under their belt, there it's it's been a below average uh, effort thus far. So we'll get into some of the numbers there. But like I said, at the end of the day, I think what matters ultimately is just that you won two out of three. And I think it was huge for the Giants to win two out of three to come out of this kind of tough stretch of games to start the season. We played the Padres, the Dodgers, and the Padres. Um, Padres are good, you know. Their record is only five and seven. Part of that is because the Giants are four and three against them. Um, but you know their offense. You know you got to deal with Bogarts and Tatis and Cronenworth and Machado every time it rolls around, and then the starting pitching that they can throw out there. We didn't see Darvish and Musgrove in this series, but we did see Dylan Cease, and the Giants won a game started by Dylan Cease, and so that was big. And then. You know, the Giants had to squeak out a win in the game started by Logan Webb. Um, So anyway, Padres are tough. Dodgers are very tough. And so to come out of this first 10 games and four and six, you know, is it sounds fine and and looks fine and feels fine. Um, It's 10 games. You know, obviously you don't want to be two games under 500 or whatever. But at, at the end of the day, like four and six is completely acceptable Whereas, you know, if you go two and eight, one and nine, uh, even, and three and seven, too, I just feel like that's bad. Um, and then it gets worse progressively as you go down the ladder. But four and six going through, you know, mostly road games. Giants are two and one now at home. They've only played this one series. And, you know, you had a tough, you got swept in LA. If they just pulled off one win in LA, then they'd be five and five. And that's, you know, that would be perfectly reasonable, but they did get swept. But now the schedule gets easier, um, at least in theory, right? Uh, The Washington Nationals come into town and the Washington Nationals are, in fact, one of the worst teams in the league. Like this is a league, the National League with a lot of parity, but there are a couple of teams, I would say the Nationals and the Rockies, for the most part, that are 
kind of the bottom feeders. And so when you're at home and you're playing the Nationals, and tonight, we'll get into this later, but Blake Snell is going to be making his Giants debut. This is a series where, you know, I don't want to say in early April that you have to do something because they could Giants could get swept and still be okay in the end but this is the type of series where you feel like you definitely should take at least two out of three and possibly sweep this series and so we'll preview that a little bit later on but just just to say the the fact that they pulled out two wins in the series it kind of felt like a miracle because in the first game they they kind of shot themselves in the foot. Um, You had a Michael Conforto base running blunder that totally took them out of an inning. Um, It would have been second and third, no outs, but he got a little too froggy on the bases and made it. He tried to score from second base on a wild pitch. Um, So he easily made it to third and then he rounded third and tried to come home. Um, And the Giants were down, uh, I think, a run at that point. And... A run, yeah, I think just one. And anyway, he got caught in between and they threw him out. And so instead of second and third, nobody out, it was runner on second, one out, and they didn't end up scoring at all. So um, that was that was a big mistake. And he also got picked off like in San Diego, I think it was, and Jung Hu Lee got picked off in San Diego. So they've made they've made some base running blunders made a lot of kind of mental type mistakes early on in the season. So keep in mind, this was the home opener. Camilo Duvall was not sharp in the bottom of the ninth inning and, or excuse me, in the top of the ninth inning, but he worked his way out of trouble to keep the game tied. So the game was tied at that point. And then they got, you know, Matt Chapman hit by pitch and then Tyra Estrada broke like an 0 for 17 with a walk-off double that scored Matt Chapman, who is underratedly fast. And so that was a huge win in a game where um, they made some mistakes. There was another, I, I, I guess I didn't write it down, but there was another mistake in that game outside of the Michael Conforto base running mistake. I want to say it was a defensive mistake. I'm getting it kind of confused because they made so many. Because in the second game, it was Jung Hu Lee. It wasn't really his fault, I suppose. But, you know, if, if, the, so the first batter of the game, I think it was the first pitch of the game, um, there was a little pop up into center field. And, um, by the way, Jordan Hicks started the home opener and he was great. And so two really good Jordan Hicks starts in a row, that's a big deal because, you know, this guy is like new to starting and he's been nothing short of phenomenal through two starts. And he made it, I think he pitched, yeah, he pitched seven innings. Oh, that was the other mistake. Double, should have been a double play ball to end an inning, uh, ground ball back to Hicks and he threw it into center field. So instead of an inning ending double play, it led to a run scoring and gave the Padres a lead that the Giants had to scratch and claw their way back from, which was exactly the same story kind of in the finale of the series in that the Giants had to scratch and claw and fight their way to just get a run across the board. Um, and and it was Padres' mistakes that the Giants took advantage of ultimately uh, in in the finale. Like the Giants are fortunate to have come out of the series with a, with a win um, in the series. But the second game... It, it started out very much on the wrong foot with a with another mistake. And so we will get into that and, and how that set the tone for the whole game. And it, it just kind of ruined things for them. Uh, but then how they were able to overcome it in the finale and win two out of three and just kind of turn the page on what was a pretty ugly series. But a win is a win is a win. So we'll get into the rest of the series and concern about the offense. Is there any? And Blake Snell's debut and all that coming up momentarily and before we get into it. Today's episode is brought to you in part by our good friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number 1 fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members, yours truly included. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action 
while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. So I just participated because one of the great things about prize picks, there's actually a couple that I can rattle off. There's many, but first of all, prize picks is available to play in more than 30 states, including California. They offer now Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account this baseball season. And for me, I ever so slightly missed out on the home opener. I took the over on four strikeouts for Jordan Hicks. I think he had six. And then I took the over on uh, two and a half walks for Dylan Cease. And he had two. And yet Mike Yastrzemski chased uh, what would have been ball four in a 3-1 count. So if Yaz had just laid off that pitch, I would have hit on that one. But anyway, it's a ton of fun. And I love testing my skills on prize picks where you can turn $10 into $1,000 with just a few taps. So um, download the app today and use code Locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app today. Use code Locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right. As promised, we are going to get into uh, the rest of this series, the the mistakes that the Giants made, how they were able to overcome them. I, I do want to discuss the offense and just the fact that they started out well, but certain players, Jung Hu Lee among them, you know, have just gone cold here and is there any concern thanks again for making lockdown giants your first listen every day every day is tomorrow we're going to be breaking down the first giant start of blake snell facing a team that you should really beat blake snell though can be erratic and so the question is like can snell come out of the gates well or is he going to be erratic and walking a bunch of people and putting himself in trouble and can the giants offense finally break through so that's what we'll be watching for. Um, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day, by the way? Do you have to turn down the volume because of all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all of the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I also want to remind you that you can uh, catch every pitch of the Giants' hometown broadcast with Sirius XM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Giants. And this is a big one, Postcast. Not only do we cover your team every day, but now we're giving you instant episodes after every single game. You've probably noticed this if you're Um, a regular follower of the show. And if you're new, you may have no idea what I'm talking about. But check out the Locked on Giants postcast right here on the Locked on Giants podcast feed, as well as streaming on the Locked on Sports Bay Area YouTube channel for that instant reaction. You can interact, enter the chat on the YouTube channel. Ton of fun with Eric Engel. And guess what? Tonight, That's right. Blake Snell's first start. I'm going to be joining Eric in the first segment of his show. So check it out tonight right after the game. And you'll find me and Eric Engel chatting about Blake Snell's first start. Get rapid reaction to all the biggest moments with the Locked on Giants postcast. That is just in addition to this show that I do and have been doing for over five years. This is just something additional. It's not replacing. It's just something extra for you if you want to check that out and get that instant reaction right after the game versus the next day. So anyway, uh, Jung-Hoo Lee lost a ball in the sun on the first pitch of the game in the middle game of the series. And instead of just a one pitch out for Keaton win, it turned into a base runner. And I think the whole game could have been different if Jung-Hoo Lee had seen that baseball. But you can't really call it a mistake when you just literally don't see the ball. But the one thing I didn't like, and so far defensively, there's been a few things I haven't really liked with Jung Hu Lee, um, things that probably can be worked on and, and maybe are adjustments um, to like a new home field, you know. But one thing I didn't like on that play is he didn't like put his arms out and kind of indicate that he didn't see it. 
Um, I didn't see him shouting. I can't see it or putting his arms out like you normally see outfielders do when they can't see the ball. He just kind of like he it looked like he assumed the whole time that the infielders were going to catch it like uh, the shortstop or the second baseman. But he just kind of like stood there and like jogged in and the ball bounced like right in front of him. And so that changed the whole game. Padres ended up with a two out grand slam inning obviously should have been over since there were two outs and one out wasn't recorded on that catch by Lee. There was also a missed strike call that would have changed the inning. But anyway, a two out grand slam. And that was the whole game Four nothing final The whole game, like ended in the first inning. But that's when we get into the offense, right? Because they couldn't they couldn't do anything against um, who was it against? It wasn't cease oh michael king uh michael king part of the kind of the centerpiece of the juan soto trade so some of these guys you know you got to tip your hat um but at the same time another mistake right um and then in the finale it took padres mistakes for the giants offense to finally come through they really kind of lucked out with a couple of hasung kim errors and hasung kim is a great defender but um yeah i especially want to just recap the way that the Giants tied the game and took the lead in the bottom of the eighth so first of all Wilmer Wilmer Flores pinch hit for Lamont Wade um and got and then the Padres made a pitching change so it was it ended up being a right on right matchup and Flores hit a single and so this guy is just so like money offensively and if Flores makes an out there the Giants probably lose this game but he hits a pinch hit single and then Bob Melvin makes the smart move. It's kind of an obvious move, but also turned out to be huge of pinch running Tyler Fitzgerald for Flores. So then Jorge Soler hits a little bleeder into right and Fitzgerald goes first to third, testing the arm of Fernando Tatis Jr., which, you know, Fernando Tatis Jr., he was a shortstop, remember, coming up. And then they moved him. He wasn't great there. Um, and they moved him to the outfield, uh, particularly after they signed Xander Bogarts. Um, their their infield was just too full. And they moved him to the outfield. It was a big experiment, but it paid off in a major way. He's just phenomenal out there. And he's got a cannon. Um, and so for Fitzgerald to just kind of have the guts to test the arm of Tatis and make it safely into third was enormous because, well, I mean, the... <laughs> So then up comes Michael Conforto, and he hits what should have been an inning-ending double play um, with runners on first and third. So it's hit to first base. Um, Jake Cronenworth tags first, so suddenly there's no force out at second. got to tag Soler um, to get that second out. And also, if Fitzgerald crosses home before they tag Soler, that run counts because the out on Soler would not be a force out. Um so Soler probably should have stopped and gone backwards to give Fitzgerald. Giants got very lucky here. So Cronenworth made basically a perfect throw to Ha Sung Kim. But the beauty is Jorge Soler is just a big man. And I think that that is what allowed this to happen, where the ball kind of hit Ha Sung Kim's glove as Soler was kind of coming in and sliding into second base, starting his slide. So he was like upright, but then starting to slide. And Kim just never really got a handle on the ball. And it popped out and rolled into center field, which allowed Fitzgerald to score the tying run. Again, bottom of the eighth. And Soler to go to third. And up comes Matt Chapman with two outs. And in a 3-1 count, he just... You know, they say like professional at bat, professional hitter, go the other way. Don't try to do too much. That's exactly what it was. Like he just took a pitch that was outside, you know, on the outside part of the plate and just drove it to right field where they were, the infield was shifted over and there was a wide open. It's not that easy. If it was that easy, hitters would do it all the time, but you can try to go to right and you end up pulling it, or you can try to go to right and you hit in the air. He just, in in this case, it was short swing um, just went with the pitch and it, it just worked out for the Giants and for Chapman. And then Camilo Duvall struck out three in the bottom or in the top of the ninth. So, hey, two Hassan Kim errors is kind of what it took. The first one was like an air milled throw on a ground ball by Jung Hu Lee. And he ended up scoring 
Uh, should have been just the one out, nobody on. Instead, it was runner on first, no outs, and he ended up scoring later in the inning on a ground ball by Matt Chapman. So I do want to get into the offense overall and then preview the uh, start by Blake Snell and kind of what it means for this pitching staff, which has also generally not been the greatest to start the season where we're, you know, you're playing two really good offenses to start the season. It's a small sample of only 10 games, but um, adding a Blake Snell to your rotation certainly can make an impact. So we will get into all of that, get into the offense in just a minute. And before we do. Today's episode is brought to you by our good friends over at game time for me. Buying tickets used to be a stressful event, and many of you know I just went on the road uh, traveling with, not with the Giants, but to fall, to watch the Giants um, in San Diego and Los Angeles, and game time is a difference maker when it comes to buying tickets to these events. I was able to find extremely good prices, and one of the best things for me is the panoramic views um, from the seats that I'm looking at because I've, I had been to Petco Park and Dodger Stadium before, but it had been a while. And also I'm looking at, I'm looking in areas that I didn't sit in before. And so to get that panoramic view of what the seat will look like ahead of time, and then also to have the game time guarantee on top of that, which is if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference and so it's just a slam dunk no-brainer for me to use game time to buy tickets to my favorite event and for me it's baseball but it doesn't have to only be baseball any sport really and then concerts theater comedy like whatever it is you can find on game time and you've got flash deals and zone deals and all kinds of deals and also this deal um when you go to uh let me just say, take the guesswork, just take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. And for a limited time, all users get $20 off any MLB purchase of $150 or more in the game time app with code first pitch terms apply. That's code F I R S T P I T C H for $20 off from March 25th to April 14th only. So that's coming up April 14th. So download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, as promised, we are going to get into the offense, look at some numbers, and then talk about Blake Snell entering the fold here tonight, making his Giants debut. It's exciting. And that's why like winning two out of three, just turn the page on the ugliness of that series Baseball is a game of, is, it is a mental game, largely. Um, and so the weight being lifted of like winning this series as opposed to losing it when it felt tense and it felt like a struggle and you still end, you just end up with a series win. I feel like that's the type of game that can kind of get you going. And I feel like, and then the Nationals come into town, you've got Blake Snell on the mound making his debut it could set this team off in the right direction. So I, I hope that's the case. Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. Every dayers tomorrow, yes, breaking down the first start um, in a Giants uniform of Blake by Blake Snell. I'll also be joining the postcast with Eric Engel right after the game tonight. So check that out um, on the Locked on Sports Bay Area YouTube channel. That's where you find the live feed. And then the... Not like after that live feed is done on Locked On Sports Bay Area on YouTube, it will get posted to this channel's podcast feed. But it's always going to have the title Postcast in the front. And that is hosted by Eric Engel. And I am Ben Kasovic. I host Locked On Giants. It's a different show. It's just an additional thing for you. Um, if you want that instant reaction right after the game, which a lot of you do, I'm sure. And that is now available to you. Also, remember, you can catch every pitch of the Giants' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Giants. So, the offense overall has not been good at this point. Like, it is, it continues to be a small sample. We are talking about 10 games, but the Giants are hitting 223 as a team, 296 on base, 357 slugging. So, 
The 223 batting average is 19th in the league, which is not great. The on base percentage of 296 is 23rd in the league, um, just ahead of the Oakland A's. Their slugging percentage is um, 20th, just ahead of the Washington Nationals. And their weighted runs created plus 100 is league average, and the Giants are at 80, 86. So they're 14% below average uh, to start the season. That's right about where the Nationals are at as well. And the Nationals, again, are coming into town tonight. Um, strikeout rate, 22.2%. That is kind of right in the middle. So last year, to start the year, they were like number one worst in terms of strikeout rate, but that hasn't really been the issue uh, so far. It's kind of been an average on balls in play issue when I look at the numbers. So they only have a 263 batting average on balls in play. League average is going to be right around 300. And it is kind of a luck slash sustainability number. Yeah, so that 263 figure is 23rd in baseball. And the team right in the middle is around 290. So I'm going to quickly actually give you the exact league average. It's 289. Yeah, league average is 289. So you should expect kind of league league average in this category. So that basically means um, like 25 points more on batting average on balls in play is what we should expect from the Giants. So like when they make contact and it's not a homer and it's in play, about what is it, 2.5 percentage points more often, we should kind of expect hits out of them. Um, But the power, isolated power, 134, that is low. It is 17th. I guess that's actually more. Power seems to be down to start the season is what that tells me. 134 is where the Giants are, and the league average is 146. And when you're playing some of your games at Oracle, that's going to happen. So anyway, they just... You know, the walk rate is only 8.7%, which is uh, right around in the middle as well, 17th. And league average walk rate is uh, 9.1%, so a little bit below average in that category. But when I look at the individual players uh, who make all of this up, um, you know, I do think Wilmer Flores is making a case to like play a little bit more, but there's not necessarily an obvious spot for him. Tyro Estrada has really struggled. Jung Hu Lee started out really well, but then has has done he's been hitting the ball on the ground like constantly, like he's kind of missing that line drive in the air kind of look. Some people f- philosophically probably think, "Oh, you're a fast leadoff guy, just hit the ball on the ground." ground balls are kind of death to major leaguers. Like you kind of want line drives and you want, you know, just to hit the ball hard is probably the most important thing. But even with the shift restrictions, they still are able to shift on him. He's hit a lot of balls up the middle that have kind of been fielded on the ground. So his uh, expected numbers are significantly better than his actual numbers. And I've seen that like, and the games I was, at in LA and San Diego, he hit quite a few balls hard that ended up being caught or like fielded and get it making outs on balls that were hit hard. He has just a 194 batting average on balls in play. That's going to come up probably a hundred points when all is said and done. And so I'm not particularly worried. He has not swung and missed at a pitch in the zone. That's crazy. He has a hundred percent zone contact rate. So when he has swung and it's been in the strike zone, he has not swung and missed yet. His chase rate has also been kind of elite. He's not chasing out of the zone. Strikeout rate under 10%. That's got to be one of the lowest rates in the league. And so there's a lot of positive signs. I think we just need to be patient and the hits are going to come. So lastly, the debut of Blake Snell. Um, I think it makes a huge difference for the starting rotation. It kind of takes that Dalton Jeffries spot. Not that... Dalton Jeffries was going to make another start, but um, they still, you know, Keaton Wynn and Kyle Harrison, you still have a couple young pitchers who are in that rotation, even with the, you know, bringing in of Blake Snell. Alex Cobb had a little bit of a setback with his elbow. Um, He's rehabbing from hip surgery, but the elbow um, 
he called it a baby, a baby setback, um, and that he expects to continue throwing this week. And so it maybe pushes him back a couple weeks, a week, two, three. Um, so maybe we are looking at May, but originally we were talking like all-star break for Alex Cobb. So, and then you've also got Robbie Ray in the wings at the all-star break around then as well. So currently, now that Blake Snell is starting tonight, you've got Webb who just pit. Yeah. So now the order is Webb, Snell, Kyle Harrison, Jordan Hicks, who again has been fantastic. I could have done the whole episode on Jordan Hicks and how good he was. And then Keaton Wynn. And I think Keaton Wynn, I mean, he pitched, he gave up those four runs and, and really none of it, they end up being earned because it's not, it's stupid. It's not an error because Jung Hu Lee didn't touch the ball, but it totally should have been an out. Like that's why errors are dumb in my opinion. And you need like a team, if you're going to do errors, you need like a team error stat because that was a ball that should have been an out a hundred percent. Um, and it led to four runs that shouldn't have scored. And then that was all he gave up and he pitched well in LA as well. But Webb, Snell, Harrison, Hicks, and Wynn is definitely Snell makes that rotation a lot better. And then you think about Alex Cobb coming back and then you think about Robbie Ray coming back and, you know, Giants rotation when, when it gets down the road here, if guys can stay healthy and guys can come back and be effective, could be one of the best in the game. And it, it gets a lot better tonight with Blake Snell on the mound. So I look forward to discussing it tomorrow on the show and also discussing it on the postcast right after the game, check it out on Locked On Sports Bay Area on YouTube. So subscribe right now, um, and and right after the game, you'll see us going live, and I'll be there talking about Blake Snell's debut. So that is all the time we have for today. Thanks again for making Locked On Giants your first listen every day. Every dayers, yes, tomorrow talking about, about Blake Snell, as I've said. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. Check me out on Twitter at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out a lot. So thank you in advance. And thank you to everyone who's done so already. I can't wait to be with you again tonight on Locked On Sports Bay Area on YouTube. And also tomorrow on the regular Locked On Giants show. Uh, so thanks again for listening. Giants got a big series win. And hopefully they get another one here. Maybe a sweep. Uh, you are now locked on Giants.